everybody, so welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to pick up where I left off on some of our previous conversations. And one of them has to do with how I'm beginning to prepare for or to start the new training block to, that's going to get me to Boston here uh, shortly. So that's actually gonna start December the 27th and it's gonna kick off by doing some cross training. So that'll be the first day before I actually get into running. But before I get that far, what I've been working on is not so much running at this point. In fact, I haven't been doing much running at all if you've been following me on Strava, but rather you're gonna see a lot of what I call yoga. And I'm gonna put yoga in quotes because I use that as a generic term when I'm doing any kind of strength or mobility exercises. And so that's what I wanted to start our conversation with. And then I wanna move in to continue to talk about the uh, run pants that I was talking about you know, in a previous video, and that's by Rabbit, the Rabbit Runner. And I wanna incorporate a little bit of the Janji brand. I thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to talk about them in comparison, maybe just a little bit, a little bit to what, the, what Rabbit has to offer. So getting back to how I'm preparing or building that uh, solid foundation to start my next training block is Netic Health. Now that's a really big part of what I'm doing. And just so you know, Netic Health isn't paying me uh, to say these things. In fact, they have no idea Idea that I'm producing this video or even talking about them right now at this point. I will probably let them know, but they have no idea that I'm doing it ahead of time. And they'll have no opportunity to preview any of the things that I say about them. But they're all good. You know, I've had a really solid experience working with them already. Uh, they did a pre-assessment, I guess, or a pre-marathon assessment for me. Now, this is a package that they have to offer. So you don't have to necessarily get a referral from a physician to go see these physical therapists online. Now, this is something that you can purchase on your own. And if you're looking for a last minute Christmas gift for a runner out there who is preparing to run uh, maybe a marathon or, or maybe a half marathon, or just want to improve the running form, this is something that you could purchase for them last minute. And I think that they would really benefit from it. I know I have already. So one of the things that I've already incorporated is they put together a list of mobility exercises based on the assessment or what they saw with me when they went through, when I went through a full physical exam, basically. So they had me do a lot of you know, stretches and they had me do some strength exercises and so on so they could judge my fitness level and where I'm at and where I should be or needed to be or areas that I could improve so that I could, you know, balance things out a little bit because I definitely have areas where I'm stronger than others and I have areas that I can definitely use some improvement. That's really been helpful and that doesn't mean that I just threw everything out the window. I still am doing all of the foam rolling that I've done before and what I've done though is to weave in all of those mobility exercises that they've suggested for me into things that I'm already doing. I've dropped any kind of duplicate things that I might have been doing previously and like I said, I've just kind of interwoven those things. And so far it's working out really well. I've gone through the series of mobility exercises they've given me to do now several times. And I think it's already, I'm already seeing some improvement. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I, I, I severely overpronate. And one of the issues with people who overpronate is because we have flat feet, uh, you know, we tend to collapse in and kind of want to roll off our big toe. And one of the exercises they identified me to do to help with lengthening that plantar fasciitis and to reduce the stiffness that I get up on that big toe uh, is to do a great toe extension. And it's a really simple exercise, but it's one that I've never done before. And at first it was a little bit difficult for me to, to do. Uh, in fact, I think it starts out having you do uh, just two minutes of that stretch. But, you know, that was, it was difficult for me to get that in the very first time that I did it. I found it to be a little bit uncomfortable. But now that I've done it several times, it's getting easier and easier each time. So it tells me that, you know, I'm making some progress that way. The other thing that they identified for me was uh, some strengthening uh, exercises. And they listed about by, you know, uh, set A, set B, and set C. And each one has several different exercises you can do. Now, so far, I've only gone through set A. And I'll tell you why. And that's because I've had a lot of what I would call delayed onset muscle soreness. You know, like if you go to the gym and you hadn't been to the gym in a while and you're lifting some weights, right? So the next day or two, your muscles are really so, so, so sore that you can barely kind of lift your arms anymore. Well, that's the way I was feeling basically from the waist down. So it tells me that they were really targeting the areas where I was the weakest. And that included my glutes and even my, uh, my quads, which surprised me some. So I thought that I was pretty strong in my quads. My glutes, I knew that I needed a little bit of work, but I didn't know that I was gonna need as much work as I'm going to do. And along those lines, with the next set, and I haven't start, gone through set B yet, but what I plan to do is to rotate those through each week. So 
As you know, I do follow the Garmin training plan and they do call for some cross training. So I'm, that's where I'm going to be fitting these in. And so I'll be doing A, B, and C each week along with all of the different mobility things as well. Uh, but because I was so sore after doing set A, I haven't moved on to set B yet. And that's okay. You know, I still have several days before I start. Well, I guess the days are getting short. I think I have five days from today or four days. I don't know. It's getting close uh, to when I really kick it off. But either way, I'm glad that I started a little bit early because otherwise I might have been a little bit too sore to go out and really enjoy my first run of the new training block. So right now I feel like I'm starting to build that uh, solid base. And then with the exercise B set, I did see that they're going to have me do some plyometrics. And so for those of you that have a plyometric box out there already, uh, I'd be interested to know which one that you went with and whether or not you went with a wood box or if you went with a foam box. And if you went with the foam box, did you go with the weighted foam box or not? Now, I already purchased one, so it's on its way. And I'll let you know what my thoughts are with that. Uh, but I'm a little bit excited to try that because that's not something that I've done in the past, you know, is to use those plyometric box to do the jump squats and that kind of stuff. So I'm excited to give that a go. So that's kind of where I'm at with, um, with Netic Health and some of the things that they're doing. Oh, and they got back with me on my run analysis and I do have some work to do. And it was kind of one of those aha moments for me when they pointed it out. It's something that I suspected maybe uh, from uh, previous videos that I've done just of myself doing shoe reviews. But until someone else points it out to you, I'm not sure that it really dawned on me that it's something that I should be addressing. And, and that is, I tend to cross over more than I should. In other words, my feet are landing more in the center of my body, almost in a straight line when I, when I run. And that's creating a lot of undue pressure on, on my, and, and wear and tear on my IT band area. And that's the area that I tend to have a lot of problems with or at least I have had recent in recent years. Up until I hit my mid-50s, I was doing pretty well in terms of not really getting all that injured. But once I hit that, that mid-50 mark, it seems like it's been difficult to break that injury cycle. So I'm hoping that going through this will help me to do that. And, and if I do get injured, maybe I'll be a little bit stronger so I can recover a little faster should that happen. So one of the things I need to work on is my running form, and that's to get my weight more centered more in line with my hip and less in line with my belly button. So I'm, I'm gonna be working on that a little bit at a time. I'm, I don't intend to make any dramatic changes because that can cause some other problems as well. I've been running this way my entire life, so it's gonna be incremental and it might take me it might take me a long time. It might take me you know, a year, two years to really get it balanced out better to where it needs to be. But that is something that I'm gonna be working on over the next four months when I start this next training block. Okay, so as I promised, I wanted to continue our conversation about the uh, rabbit runner pants that I was talking about. They're, they're awesome. In fact, I'm wearing them right now. So you can see I got these on. They're, they're super soft and stretchy. And Janji isn't a name, a household name like, you know, Nike or Adidas or some or New Balance or some of those names or even Rabbit. Rabbit is a little lesser known uh, brand, but I think if you've been running for a while, you definitely know Rabbit. And you probably have some Rabbit run gear because it is gear that I absolutely love. I got on a rabbit top right now, super soft to the touch. That's one of the things that I love about the rabbit gears. They're very soft, super comfortable, and you can just wear it around the house, maybe doing a YouTube video like I am today. But one of the big things that I noticed, and I do have some John G. pants uh, as well. These are the runner pants that would be the equivalent to the rabbit runners. They cost about the same. You know, both of these are up around that $100 mark, so they're not inexpensive. But but I would rather pay the $100 up front and have a pair of running pants or runner pants uh, that's going to last five or six years than to pay $40 and have them tear or rip out after a month or two. So that, that doesn't make any sense. And I do have a lot of gear that I've had for a number of years. I have some Adidas Climate uh, climate control running pants that I have they must be five or six years old and I still wear them all the time so they're holding up really well I suspect that these are going to be the same way both the Janji runner pants and the uh, rabbit runner pants are going to be ones that I'm going to be able to throw in my rotation for years to come and they're super both of them are super soft one of the things that I noticed right off the bat that's the biggest difference between these two is this pair of Janji is quite a bit heavier than the Rabbit Runner pants that I was talking about last week. 
um, and, and I'll put those weights up on screen. I don't exactly remember what they are right off the top of my head, but when I weighed them, I think there's about two and a half ounces difference, meaning that the John G came in two and a half ounces heavier. But it was noticeable when I just picked them up and I had them, you know, each one in each hand, is that John G was heavier. So that tells me that, you know, if it's colder out, like right now, and I don't, you probably can't see it behind me, but we are in the middle of this, the, the storm of the century, as a lot of people have been calling it, but it's a winter storm with spring and then tons and tons of snow, lots of bitter cold and wind. And these would be the pants that I would wear as the outer shell on a day like today because they're a little heavier, they're a good wind break, and I think that they would do terrific in uh, slightly colder weather. The rabbits do great, don't get me wrong, they're, they're a great wind break and they're great for, for layering. But these, but the John G are just a little bit heavier. They're both super soft, they both have you know a lot of stretch to the material, so they're very similar that way. One of the other big differences, um, and I'm going to try to search around here for the pant legs. So on the pant legs, with the John G, they you know they are gathered a bit at the at the bottom, but there's no zipper like there is in the Rabbit Runner pants. And then the other big difference is with Rabbit, you got the two zipper pockets up front, and John G, you've got those two zipper pockets, but you also have a third pocket in the back, and I really like that. Uh, you know, I wish that Rabbit would do something like that. So if you're from Rabbit and you're watching this video or somebody wants to, who knows somebody that works at Rabbit who's watching this video, maybe give them a heads up that, you know, I think runners would really appreciate having that third pocket in the back of, of these because there isn't one. You know, there's a back here. And why I like that is, as you've seen in other videos, when I go out trail running, especially uh, where I have to drive there, I take the majority of my keys off my key fob, and, but then I still have to carry it with me. And when I put it in my front pocket, when I run, it just seems to kind of bang around a little bit. That's kind of a nuisance. But I also run with my MP3 player, my little iPod Nano that you might have seen in lots of videos. And you know, I do have the capability of putting music on my uh, Garmin Phoenix 6, but I don't like to do that. I like to keep the battery for you know, keeping track of all my activities that I'm doing and not necessarily burning it up with my music. So I use the Apple iPod. I've had it for years. I think it's like the seventh gen. So I don't know how old it is, but it's really old, holding up really well. But that's something too that I would put in that back pocket because in the front pockets, they tend to want to bounce around when I'm running and I don't, I don't particularly care for that. I don't like that feeling. So, so there it is. So that's a contented, continuing our conversation with the rabbit and a little bit of versus John G uh, run pants. I think in the next video, depending on you know, how the kinds of reactions I get in the comment section below to this one, I might talk a little bit about the difference between some of my favorite uh, half tights, the rabbit half tight that I wore in Detroit, and then the John G groundwork uh, half tights that I wore to run the Bayshore Marathon. So I think that might be fun for us to talk about. You guys let me know in the comment section below if you have any interest in that as well. So, hey, that's it for today's video. As always, run tall, run strong. Be kind of one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim.